Now we'd like to go to our wonderful presenter, uh, Nora Farage. I think Todd has another meeting. He can't be with us today, but Nora Farage, assistant principal at Chafee Adult School is here with us. And we're so excited to see her presentation. So uh, yes, I my name is Nora Farad. The Harani is, is the long one. That's my maiden name. And I'm the assistant principal at Chafee Adult School. I'm one of them. And I'm over the ESL program. Um, and so Lori has graciously invited us to talk about our IELCE programs. And so I'm going to talk to you about our two programs. It's the Microsoft Office Certificate Program and the Instructional Assistant Certificate Program. And both of these programs really came from what the students were asking for. At the same time, we looked at what EL Civics co-ops we could use, and at the same time, what resources we had in-house so we wouldn't need to search something outside of what we actually had. So here we go. Okay, so for these two programs, uh, this is what's common about them. They're year long, so there's two semesters. There's hands-on training. They receive career vocabulary, skill building, and of course there's that EL Civics Co-op. All the instructional materials, software licenses, books, training fees, and learning management software accounts are free of charge for students and anybody who's enrolled in our IELCE programs. And then each student is supported by a primary team. That's basically the support clerk, the counselor for career, and then myself, the IELCE administrator. A support team includes the teachers for the program and support staff depending on that program, and I'll be going over that. And then um, Google Classroom is the learning management software. And then Burlington English is what we use for our career skills modules and the EL Civics Co-ops. How are they different? So the instructional assistant students have to be taking either our advanced or um, advanced higher master ESL class. So they have to score 230 and above on CASAS. They're going to complete field work. There's about 40 hours that they'll complete included the mandated trainings by the district, and I'll go over those. We only have one section or one cohort that's offered yearly for the Instructional Assistant Certificate Program, while the Microsoft Office has two cohorts, so two different times that they would be able to attend. Uh, only the Instructional Assistant cohort will meet in a hybrid format with that weekly in-person asynchronous and Zoom sessions. Instructional materials are a little bit different for both. The Microsoft Office Certificate Program has a Chafee College component, so we partnered with our community college within our consortia. Our instructional assistant students have to pass the 70% on both the English Language Arts and Math sections of our exam, and that exam is the academic assessment that's used for our district and neighboring districts, and I'll go over those as well. So if we look at the Microsoft Office Certificate Program, the three components, of course, are CTE, ELD, and then EL Civics. And so in order to receive the certificate after the year, the students will have uh, been enrolled in Microsoft Office 1, Microsoft Office 2. So those are the two classes that will meet CTE. And then they take with uh, Chafee College, they'll take the English for Business, and the job search and interviewing skills. So that's the business technology aspect coursework for CTE. There's also um, taking the ELD career view, Pearson view basically um, book. It's career vocabulary and lessons. And then the co-op is 73.2. And I'm gonna go through each one as well. So looking at, again, our certificate program for Microsoft Office, we partnered with Chafee College. So looking again at those four components that I just went over, um, two are at Chafee Adult School, which are the Microsoft Office, and then they're gonna be taking, sorry, three, uh, the Chafee Adult School, the co-op, and they're gonna be doing the career vocabulary. It's two semesters, and then they're taking two courses at Chafee College, and they're actually online asynchronously. And I'll go over those. So what is the requirements in order to be in the ILCE program? Students have to score 230 and above on the reading assessment, and then they're enrolled in our IELCE program so they could then take our Chafee College classes. They are not required to be concurrently enrolled in our ESL classes because they're taking the rigor of college courses. 
Now, students who choose to do that and have room in their schedule, we'll let them take also the mastery or high advanced um, ESL class. They will also work with a counselor and our counselor is our uh, college and career counselor. So he works with them on resume building and career skills and helps them with applications as well. Now let's say a student scored less than 230, but they scored um, at an intermediate, so not a beginning level. So what we look at is from a 220 to 229, they're not gonna be enrolled in Chafee College, but we will enroll them in the Microsoft Office classes and they have to be enrolled in an ESL class. So they're concurrently enrolled in both. And then our support clerk who's responsible for IELCE program will continue to assess them in CASAS and work with them. And at the same time, the CTE teacher that teaches the Microsoft Office class will work with the ESL teacher to see what are the strands that students need to work on in order to raise that CASA score. And then once their score is 230, we enroll them in the Chafee College course. So that way they don't lose any time. They'll still be finishing off their coursework. They just won't be able to do the um, Chafee College classes. So looking at the Chafee Adult School courses, this is a typical schedule. In the fall, we're going to enroll them in Microsoft Office One. And what that entails is Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, they do task three of the Co-op 73.2, and then they'll also do some vocabulary and career view. Uh, at the same time, Microsoft Office 2 is given in the spring. That's where they do Excel, Access Publisher, and they complete task two of 73.2 and ongoing vocabulary with that career view modules. Um, Google Classroom is offered for basically their EL Civics as well as the Microsoft Office, so those are embedded together. Our teacher is actually CTE and ESL credential, and she collaborates with the ESL teachers to help guide those students who need those higher CASA scores, and she also communicates her class expectations, so it's a nice uh, collaborative model that we have here. So how, when I talked about the cohort, I said that we have two cohorts a year for our Microsoft Office, and that's because we offer mornings or evenings depending on a student's schedule. So in the mornings, these are in-person. So from eight to 10 in the morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, our students are gonna come on campus and the teacher is there. And in the evenings, Tuesdays and Thursdays for three hours, 5.45 to 8.45, they have distance learning classes with Zoom. So it's synchronous and asynchronous at the same time. This allows for that concurrent ESL enrollment, especially for those students not in the IELCE program. So they have to be again enrolled in that ESL class. At the same time, if a student isn't feeling well, you know, especially we're still dealing with COVID and all the illnesses that come with that, um, and they can't come in person, they can log in in the evening and not miss any instruction. And again, there is that LMS software, which is our Google Classroom being used. So students can also be able to um, work with the teacher if they can't come on campus and vice versa. Let's say our remote student is having issues logging in, whatever it is, they can come and meet with the teacher because the teacher is here once a week and she's able during those Zoom sessions to be available. So that way students who need extra help get tutoring, the teacher is still present. So that way we have two different cohorts, but they actually um, can, can uh, alternate if they wanted to come in the evening or uh, attend the morning. So looking at those Chafee College courses, our partnership is with our Adult Education Pathways, which is the community college. Chafee College is part of our consortia. And so in the fall, students will be enrolled in the Business Technology 455, known as English for Business. And it is asynchronous, meaning students can log in at any time. There's no Zoom session. Um, in the spring, they're enrolled in BizTech 400, which is job search and interviewing skills. And in order for them to be able to um, attend Chafee College, our clerk and the counselor from AEP We'll work together and, and go to the classroom and enroll students and help them obtain their Chafee College ID. Once they have that Chafee College ID, the clerk will work with them in order for them to enroll in the classes and make sure they register for the right class. They complete the form stack through Chafee College, and then I'm the administrator over that, and then I will approve it. They are also assigned, besides our counselor, 
They're assigned our, uh, the adult education pathways counselor. So a Chafee College counselor comes every other Tuesday here and works with students and helps them and helps them with the My Chafee portal because that's how they're gonna be able to access their courses and Canvas. At the same time, the adult education pathways counselor, our counselor, the support clerk and myself, we all work together. And then the Chafee Adult School teacher will work with the professor from Chafee College. So that way the students are kind of on the same path. There's also tutoring available to our students um, that is through the adult education pathway. So through our consortia, there's actually that counselor. They can actually meet with the counselor and then they also meet with um, on-site tutors as well. So that's for um, Chafee College. So what would a typical schedule look like when we add our classes with Chafee College for the IELC Microsoft Office Certificate Program? In the fall, students will be enrolled again in Microsoft Office One, depending on which time and day they want. And then they'll also be taking that completely online Chafee College course, which is English for Business. In the spring, we enroll them in Microsoft Office Two, and then they're taking that Chafee College course, which is job search and interviewing skills, and it is completely online. So that's a full year. So I told you a little bit about career vocabulary and EL Civics. I wanted you to see what it looks like. So basically that career view is that book right here. I don't know if you can see me. You can't see my little cursor. Anyway, uh, it's on the left-hand side. They're going to be taking the chapters on information technology. So it's English for office and information technology. And so these are basically the topics, office administration, occupations, responsibilities, equipment, communication. There's some academic lessons in there and some career vocabulary. At the same time, they're taking the COAP, which is 73.2, to demonstrate the language and literacy skills necessary to effectively participate in workforce training and work in information and communication technologies. So they're doing two tasks and assessments and then our school will give them a certificate as well. Um, the, the book that you see here that says Chafee Adult School, that is actually the EL Civics workbook our EL Civics coordinator puts together. And this is actually online as well as a tangible hard copy. The online is through Google Classroom. So they have their lessons that they submit to their teacher because again, this is information technology. So they need to have that uh, technology aspect. And at the same time, they have the, um, the hard copy for themselves and the teacher can go over that with them. So looking again at that career vocabulary EL Civics, they're taking the uh, ELD which and the EL Civics, and then the career vocabulary with their co-op. So all this is kind of embedded within that Microsoft Office because that teacher is ESL and CTE credential. Okay. So what are the benefits? Once they complete our IELCE program, what are their benefits? They get four and a half college credits on their transcript or 11 and a half high school diploma elective credits. So anybody who wants to continue for a high school diploma would be able to meet our district's college, uh, sorry, computer proficiency requirement, and they get 11 and a half high school diploma elective credits. Should they want to go to Chafee College and continue? they receive four and a half college credits on their transcript. Both our counselors, the R counselor and the Adult Education Pathways, which is that Chafee College counselor, will guide the students. They'll be able to do resume building and job searching. Our counselor will provide our district with who our completers are every time they finish, and they get added to our inside hiring pool and the outside hiring pool for feeder school or districts. Our counselor will guide the students with creating ed join profiles, especially for school and local agencies and completing any applications. Our students also will learn how to create LinkedIn and social media uh, profiles for business. Our postings are emailed to students with follow-up calls from our counselor and they receive ongoing support for continuing education and career advancement from both of our counselors, the high school diploma counselor GED and the continuing education and college career. So um, this is the checklist that we give students that what they understand once they go through orientation, they get to actually mark these off and it makes students really happy because then they get to smile that they finished it. And we, some students actually frame it 
Others will come to us, we laminate it, so it's great stuff. If they scored lower than 230, we tell them just continue working on that CASAS reading skills um, so that way your, your teacher will be able to help you so you can move forward. Um, so like I said, they first will register for the course, then it kind of takes them step by step, who they have to meet with, how they register, all that stuff. And in the end, it says, congratulations, you did it, you can smile. And so we actually have pictures of students where they come in, we laminate it, and we take their picture. So they get really excited about this. Okay, so that was the Microsoft Office. So, so um, Nora, can we, we have a question from Kathleen Pat Peterson. Kathleen, you might want to unmute yourself. I'm not sure if your question was already answered or not. Before you move on to the next one, or if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to see the chat. It's like because I'm. Because are the ESL classes co-enrolled with Chafee? I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure I understand it, but I, I think it may have been answered. Um, Kathleen, are you still with us? And and uh, can you speak your question? Are these ESL classes that the, that the students that, that score high intermediate? Are, is it a general ESL class or is it a specific ESL support class for this uh, course? It's a specific, it's, it's a general ESL class. So we have general ESL classes. And then the minute the students are in our program, that's where they're taking the specific co-op. So we have students who will, have, will end up doing both, like the regular general ESL co-ops that we have are 243, not specific to these programs. Uh, because they choose to do both their mastery ESL class, uh, sorry, the three classes, they choose to do mastery ESL, which is very general, and then they'll do the Microsoft Office, which includes that EL support, and they'll do Chafee College. So depending on a student's schedule, those who score less than 230 are going to do the general ESL classes that we have here. So that way they continue doing CASAS, and then they do another co-op. So on your list of classes, uh, when they would take from the fall semester and spring semester, mm -hmm. they could add another ESL class to that yes. schedule. Okay, thank you. Yes, so again, going back to just to show you. Um, so here, the eligibility requirements less than the 230 or more than the 230. So let's say they scored, they, they're not required, but students are offered the opportunity to take our ESL classes as well, if their schedule permits. So depending if the school student says, I don't want to lose my mastery class, that's fine. We, we, we enroll them. Some students are like, I can't, you know, I have this barrier to childcare or whatever it is, then they don't have to. The ones that have to are less than the 230. They have to be enrolled in our ESL classes. That's just so we can continue to prepare them and raise their score. And Nora, I think uh, the next question from Marin is referring to, I think, two slides later, if you can just move your slides. Um, okay, two. which one? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that one. Uh -huh. uh, there was a concern about 70.2. <clears throat> Did you mean to put 73.2 there in those two areas? Oh, let me see. Let me see. I probably must. Yeah, 73.2. Okay, I apologize. 70.2 so no. is the other one. It's right here, objective 73.2. Yes. Okay. So Good. on the right, that's where you should see where it says objective. That's just a quick me copying and pasting. And yeah, that's on me. Okay, no worries. <laughs> that's a total my bad on my part. But yes, it is 73.2. And it's on. It's right here on the right-hand side, right under, um, it shouldn't say 70.2. That's the one for the other one, ECE. And uh, Marin uh, Anton, who's working on entrepreneurship right now, is asking also if your program has used CoAP three, um, which is business, you know, entrepreneurship or business related. No, the CoAP um, three is more business. This is actually more of information technology. So they learn how to take apart the computer, understand its parts. Uh, there's, it's more, it's a lot of hardware, more, and a lot of that rather than just being business. There is a component of it, that technology aspect too. So that's why we did this one because these tasks ask them like, what are the parts of a computer? Uh, how do you save your files? How, there's a lot more than just uh, the occupation of business and starting your own business and all that other stuff. And so that leads, thank you. And that leads to my question. What kind of jobs are your students getting after they complete this certificate? So we have students who are working actually in, uh, in our district. They're either 
in the office. They're helping with, you know, whatever it is that they do. Um, we have students uh, in our feeder elementary school districts who are not only in the office, they're actually helping in the classroom. And we have some that are actually working within cities. So like um, parks and recreation, um, you know, some of them are even, I'm trying to think of all of our grads, what they're doing, I'm trying to think of their stuff. But yeah, it's pretty much, um, I even have one who's working at the help desk for Chafee College, it's IT. So based on, because she had an advanced degree from her own country and she um, has a, a degree in computer science, but didn't know how, you know, the, the, the barrier of language. And so by taking our course, she was able to incorporate what she knew and she's using that. So she actually works at the IT desk and we had actually Chafee College help with that because <laughs> she's part of our hiring pool. Well, I really appreciate it all the collaboration you're doing, your program shows that, and also that you're helping students with job skills and job search and helping students actually get jobs. That's so important. Would yes. you like to move on to talk to us about our your next program? Yes. So that one is the 70.2. I apologize, put it on me. And um, let me get to this one. So our instructional assistant certificate program this one is all in-house. And what I mean by in-house is we did not partner with anything outside of our district because we already have a first aid CPR teacher in-house. We already offer the academic assessment for our district and neighboring districts. And um, we used our district to help us with the whole uh, package of um, the mandated reporter and all these things. So you'll be able to see the difference between the two programs that there's no Chafee College component here. So here there are six components to receive the certificate. Students are gonna take the instructional assistant course. They're gonna take the academic assessment. They're still gonna do career vocabulary and lessons. They're gonna do co-op 70.2. They're gonna complete 40 hours of field work. They're gonna have to do CPR, first aid. They're gonna do tuberculosis, um, TB clearance. They're gonna get fingerprinting done. And then um, they need to have, again, those 40 documented hours in the classroom with the teacher present. And then they also do resume building and they do mock interviews. And so I'll go over each one as well. So what a typical schedule will look like in the fall, the students are gonna learn what is the role of the instructional assistant? What are the types of instructional assistants? How to work with students with disabilities? They're gonna prepare for the academic assessment in English and math. They're going to take that vocabulary and academic readiness, and they're going to do task one from the EL Civic 70.2. In the spring, they learn about role playing. They do mock interviewing and resume building. They take their first aid and CPR training, and they get their certificate. They pass. They continue doing their math and English language arts assessment until they pass with the 70%. Um, they do academic readiness and vocabulary, and then they complete task two of the EL Civic 70.2 objective. The teacher who teaches our instructional assistant is our mastery ESL teacher, who also has an, a single subject credential in English language arts, and she also has a, her, spe, her special education credential. So um, she's the one who teaches the class. She collaborates with our counselor, our clerk, who is over our IELCE programs, our first aid CPR teacher, our academic assessment clerk. And that way everybody's kind of working together so students can be able to complete the program. So what is the academic assessment? This exam is in accordance with the Elementary and Secondary Act that allows those lacking necessary course or degree requirements to seek employment as a paraprofessional or instructional assistant. And we actually give this uh, assessment we have for the public as well. So when we came up with this program, we thought, okay, well, how can we meet the needs of our ESL students who have advanced degrees from their own country? Some of them have been teachers, some of them are instructional assistants, preschool teachers. And so we looked at our academic assessment that is actually being used by neighboring, you know, feeder school districts and our own, and we built around it. So our teacher will collaborate with the math teacher that teaches ABE math and GED math. So that way they get their supplemental math instruction. Our students are assessed many times, not with the public. So the clerk will work with them and make sure they get special times to be able to take these tests. 
as soon as they score 70%, the student doesn't have to do the other, the entire thing. They just complete the section, kind of like GED, instead of doing all of the courses that you, you, um, that you, let's say you passed all courses but one, you only have to repeat the one you didn't pass. It's the same thing. Um, and then our IELCE clerk will work with the academic assessment clerk and the teacher. They'll create that schedule. They let the students know about it. And then there's review sessions. Our, the clerk will come to our campus and administer the exam. The scores will be sent to the teacher. So the teacher then is the one who's giving them, they get a certificate for completing um, both sections. We clap for them, we tweet it, and it's like a big deal for them because they're not easy uh, sections to pass. So many of our students will pass really um, with flying colors with math because it's a universal language, but English takes them time because there's a high academic rigor there with language. So again, this is the correct one, 70.2. You can see when we talk about academic readiness, these are some of the topics we go over. They learn about the classroom and actions, types of schools, because a lot of our students are from overseas and the schools are a little bit different and how the US education system's a little bit different. So they learn about the US education system. They read um, some different informational text. There's a lot of literature and writing that they go through. There's the ELA composition. They learn about core academic subjects, how they're different, how high school is different than elementary and junior high. Um, the book we use is the English for Workplace Civics and Academic Readiness. That's the one for the, um, the career vocabulary. And then 70.2, that other book you see is what our EL Civics Coordinator put together. And the teacher will post this also on Google Classroom so students will be able to submit their lessons electronically. And students are given the workbook, again, as a hard copy for themselves. And 70.2 is to demonstrate the language and literacy skills necessary mm -hmm. to effectively participate in workforce training early childhood education. And they receive a certificate once they pass. So what is the process to get field work? So in order for them, once they finish all that, they still need to do 40 hours of field work. So before even completing the field work, um, students have to have our first aid CPR certification. So our teacher will provide instruction and assessment. Um, at the same time, they have to have their clearance for TB. We will cover the cost for them to go to uh, the clinic and be able to show that they actually are clear. Um, fingerprinting, we cover the cost of their fingerprinting, so our district will send them to where um, teachers go, so they'll be able to get fingerprinted. Students have to complete the child abuse mandated reporter training, the sexual harassment training, and then our district uh, will come here from personnel, and they'll work with students to help them complete the district volunteer application. So these are all mandated before the student could enter the classroom. This is what they have to do. So once they're cleared for field work, then the students will meet with our clerk and provide their availability. That the, the clerk will work then with our um, adult education teachers, as well as our district and site coordinators to create a calendar that has 40 hours of field work. So students will not just be at the adult school, they will work with our um, new Tiger program, which is basically the newcomer school at Chafee High School. And these are students who um, do not have English language skills enough to be with the general population. So it's a special uh, program for newcomers. Um, so our, our, because our clerks are bilingual, um, depending on what language that the school is requesting, we will send that student to do their field work there. So many of our students are Mandarin speakers and um, we have a huge population of those coming from China. Same thing with Arabic from the Middle East, North African region. So depending on what language and the need that uh, school sites have, they'll let me know, I'll let the clerk know, and then we let the student know, and the student then will go and do, complete their 40 hours of field work. Some students will do more than one school, others will stay at the school, depending on what the school site need is. Once they um, are assigned to a school or many schools, depending on what job they're gonna be doing, there's a form that needs to be completed for them to log their hours. Every teacher will sign off once the hours are completed with them. They submit their form to the clerk. I will then verify the hours. Many times I'll call the assistant principal of the school site and just confirm that. 
ask for their um, opinion as to how the student has done, just a very informal evaluation, and then I will sign the form. Students then will complete a written reflection on their fieldwork, what was done in the classroom, what school or class, what was learned. That short reflection piece is also placed in a PowerPoint. We put it all together. And then at the end of the year, um, students get to share out again all their experiences as part of our party or culmination event with them. Um, and then that is also placed in the student's portfolio as part of their when they do their mock interviews and um, resume building. So um, upon completion of fieldwork, students then will meet with our counselor and they work on the following. They do resume building, so they have to create a resume on career cruising, which is one of the platforms we use for all of our students, and they will complete a professional profile on EdJoin. They will then participate in, I should say in, not in, sorry, at least one mock interview, and then they will review their communication, critical thinking, leadership, work ethics, teamwork, and positive attitude. These are soft skills that have been embedded within the curriculum. Um, students who want to continue with an American GED or high school equivalency will be referred then um, and work with them. Those who want high school diploma um, to, uh, will then be able to work with the high school diploma counselor for further guidance. Um, should, let me get to the chat. Nora and Proxy Hammond students complete your certificate each year. It kind of um, changes because this is our fifth year doing this. So sometimes our first time we did this, we had 40 students enroll and I want to say 26 completed. Um, the second year we did it, the second half we had COVID. And so we lost some students, um, but we ended up with 19. And then I'm trying to think the third year, it's gonna take me time, but I can um, send it to you. Uh, with COVID, we had to kind of change how we do things. So that's why we have Google Classroom now. So we can make sure that students who can't come in person can still be able to participate. Um, and we actually offer this year ESL remote classes. So that way students who can't come physically in a classroom can be part of the virtual classroom. So I can send uh, you guys some numbers, but on, off the top of my head, I can't tell you. <laughs> I apologize. I think I think the numbers you gave us are great, Nora. And there was one other question from Barbara. She said, I'm curious of having a year long IELCE program is challenging as far as getting students to commit to the full year. Can you address that for us? Yes. So when we initially did this, I too was a little bit skeptical. And so I found that when we do our orientation, um, it's a, it, it, we bring them in. So how it works for this one is it's by teacher recommendation. So teachers will let us know, hey, the student is interested. I'll send out the flyer. And then the teacher will go to the classroom, talk about it, and we generate an interest list. We don't tell them a lot about the commitment. Then when they come, we get about, I, I want to say close to 50 students just fill it up because they don't know what it really entails because we make it all fun. It's the rah, rah, right stuff. And then we go through the program. And um, what has helped is having students who have completed it are the ones telling the other students how rewarding it is. And then because we have kind of have now a nice little portfolio going and students talking about their experiences and their field work, because these are students who have been in the field in their um, native country, they welcome this as a way of kind of, it's an entry of getting into the schools because that's really what they want to do. Um, we, those students we lose deals with uh, either they cannot uh, do the 40 hours of field work. And so what we've been finding is if they can't complete 40 hours within that year, we have them come back. I have students from two years ago who are completing now their field work. So we don't lose uh, sight or in touch of our students. Our clerk is always checking on them. Even the students who complete our program, we ask them, what, you know, how, what, what would you do differently? They would tell us, we kind of tweak our program. So what it looks like in uh, 2018 is not what it looks like now, I want to say. So um, it's challenging in the beginning, but the rewards are immense. And students coming back and telling us all the things they're doing at our feeder elementary schools, junior highs, even here in our district is just, um, it's worth it. It's worth all the, the work that you have to do to get it going. And Nora, what, how many students do you think have, have gotten jobs or what kind of percentage do you think has gotten jobs? Um, so just right now at the top of my head, I can tell you last year, 
from our 20 students, I would say 15 have jobs and five we're working on getting them in. So I, I would say COVID has kind of hurt us because it's been hard to get to those students, but the students were able to get back to do the field work. Our school, we kind of created a partnership with our district that once they complete the field work, they get to meet those teachers. Our teachers are requesting our students to be hired. So they're part of like an applicant pool outside of, um, they kind of get first dibs. I don't know how to say this without you know being politically correct. So um, our students are given priority over other applicants. That sounds great. great. And I, what I really like is, is just, the way you've supported your students at every step in order to get them jobs. I think research has shown that students really need a lot of support to get through the barriers of applying to the college, of filling out the forms, of doing the volunteer form, all those things. Students need support to make that happen. And you, your program and your checklist, et cetera, show that all the support you're giving and all the success. 15 out of 20 students being placed in jobs is just spectacular. And I also appreciate that you're uh, training students to serve your own district, which uh, is great for your district, but also great for your students to be able to find jobs right, right there. Um, and honestly, um, having bilingual students really helps. So when you look at your ESL population, uh, I recommend like a survey of knowing what the languages are. Because when you set this up and you want to, you know, look at availability of where they can go, the first thing I do is I look at those languages. I go straight to the high schools and the theater schools like, hey, I have a bilingual person ready with Mandarin, Arabic, Pashto, Dari, I mean, Korean, Vietnamese, you guys know you're in the field. So we've got the hidden gem, I say. And so by utilizing that cultural wealth of knowledge, we're able to really tap into what others can't do. So. Um, I'm going to continue if that's okay. <laughs> yes, please go ahead. Okay, so um, here we go. So job opportunities, because I know you guys know about uh, students who don't have documentation legally to work. So what can we do with that? So what we've done is students, first of all, who have that documentation to legally work in the U.S. and have a high school diploma or GED from their home country, we recommend them for the hiring pool. Uh, most instructional assistants have to have a high school diploma or GED in a lot of the districts. So what we do is if they have it, they show us their social security or their documentation. Automatically, the council will work with them on refining those applications, making sure each job posting caters to how their application is written and their resume. And then that hiring pool is always updated by the counselor. So as soon as the student you know, shows that documentation, they finished their 40 hours, they got their certificate, we put it in a nice little portfolio with the reflection piece. And he actually does a lot of the work for um, talking to the different personnel uh, administrators and hiring and trying to get them in. So we kind of do a lot of back end from our part to kind of push that along. Um, let's say a student doesn't have that documentation to work in the US, maybe doesn't have the, also the GED or high school diploma. We put them in the volunteer pool. We still want them to use those job skills that they've attained, whether it's the soft skills or um, the hard skills. And so we, what we do is we, uh, first of all, our IESC clerk will work with those students on updating the file when that changes. A lot of them are waiting, you know, for their documentation or they're waiting to show their transcripts from their home country. We're going to bring them in. We're going to evaluate them with AERC. That takes time, but within that time, that student also could be referred to GED and high school diploma, work on whatever they need for their coursework because we want to make sure they get that as well. Um, and we keep them in the volunteer. So they volunteer for us here. They volunteer at school sites. They also volunteer within our feeder districts. We just want to make sure that we're able to do that. Um, and then all of our completers, regardless of documentation, will receive three certificates. One of the academic assessment, and this is from us, our EL civics. So these are all in-house and our instructional assistant. So these are all in-house certificates. Todd Haig, our principal, signs them off, and we do a party for them. And then that was actually the first slide you saw. I'll tweet it. Uh, we, we use a lot of social media, and we also put it on our website. Um, those who have a social security card or legal work documentation are also provided a letter of recommendation for hiring. Again, just like that one has a program checklist, um, this is the one that uh, also is for our instructional assistants. 
So it's the same thing. They go through every single piece from the beginning of registering for the program, when they pass their English and their math, they do the EL Civics Unit on Early Childhood Education, they have to pass their first aid CPR, they have to pass their course, and then they volunteer application, waiver of liability, confidentiality, and they go through every single piece all the way to the end, which is congratulations, you did it, smile, and we do the same thing. We laminate it, some are, are frame it, they put it in their portfolio, it's just a way for them it's on actually cardstock. I make sure in color. And so it's a great thing for them to have for themselves. And uh, I think that's it. But now I'm going to go through the chat. So um, let me go up. Okay. So I think I've asked you the question. The last one says, would you mind sharing the two program checklists with us? Um, I, don't, I don't know, Maren, if, you're, if the slides will do or if you... Um, would like that in a Word document or whatever kind of document it is. Um, I think I've gone through, were there any other questions that I missed? And and Nora, are you willing to share your slides? Yes, so I will um, send those to you, Lori, or do you want me to, let me see if I can. Yeah, just them. send them to me and I'll send them okay. out. Okay, because I was gonna do it through the chat, but it'll be a shared link and then I have yeah, to no. restrict send it, it to so me. it's just easier. I'll send it to everyone <laughs> if you have those. To yeah. checklist in a Word document or some other. So the checklist is in a PDF because I have, um, right. yeah, it's and and yeah, I don't have it in Word because I actually do stuff in PDF. I have PDF the, is fine if you don't mind okay. sharing it. Otherwise, yes. they can see what it is on the slides. Yes. Um, yes, one co-op uh, per year for each IELCE program. Yes, because they're specific. If that's the question. But our general ESL does do three. So um, we have three co-ops for our general ESL population. And then our IELCE are specific to that one co-op. And then we separate it by tasks. And it is unusual, a little bit unusual to do a co-op at one task in one part of the year and one task in another part of the year. But because they have their students committed to this, there, there's no problem doing it. The only problem in spreading it out is that students won't complete both tasks, but because they're in this kind of year long program, uh, there is basically no problem that they have completed the two tasks and then they uh, the assessment can be reported at the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. so that's great. And I, it looks to me that you, you did that because the task relates to the content of the instruction during that semester. So that that makes a lot of sense. Um, and, uh, you know, again, the the meticulousness of the strategy and supporting the students of having so much collaboration is just excellent. And we so appreciate you sharing this with us, Nora, so that mm -hmm. other people can see how you've done it. Are there any uh, more questions for Nora? Um, can I ask a question? My name is Barbara. I'm from Watsonville. Um, so one co-op per year per IELC class, and you said that it was completely fine to divide that co-op into testing one task per semester. Do you test after each semester only one task, or are you doing it at the end of the year? I need to no. get... So yeah. each uh, task goes with, it's kind of like embedded part of the curriculum. So we, we create modules for that task. So that semester is based on that task, the modules they're receiving and all that supporting, um, the, the supporting curriculum. It all goes together and then they're tested on that task. Then we go to the next task and then we test them. And at the end of the year, they receive the certificate. So students know because of the checklist, each task is a box. Okay, so for theoretically, if they didn't pass the first task, would you retest them in yes. the second semester? Okay. So what our teacher will do is depending on, uh, because if it's an oral part of the task or the student wasn't available, we do make up. So the second semester, the teacher will do a review and then test the student because they weren't available. If they didn't pass, then we still do the second task. We don't retest until the teacher then has to the whole idea of testing the student to see if they're proficient enough to be able to move on. If they're not, and EL Civics continues to be a problem where the teacher's working with them, they still don't get it, 
We've had a students where we have to put them in an ESL class just to ensure that they have the rigor enough to continue. Okay, but it's also very, very rare because one more they question get, um, is that you said 230 and above, if they fell below the 230 mark, that you would offer supports or you would you would supplement with an additional ESL class. I just want to get some clarity. Because yeah, we have so we have two different programs. This program, the instructional assistant, is only for 230 and above. It's not anybody less than that because there's only one. We're not partnering with another, like a college requires that type of rigor. So because there's that academic language that students need for instructional assistant, we found that less than 230, they are not successful. And these students anyway have to be enrolled in our ESL class because there's no Chafee College component. With the other one, the Microsoft Office, there's a Chafee College component. So we don't require them to be part of our ESL classes because they're already doing so much. But if it's less than 230, then we can't put them in Chafee College, which means they have to have that support. So we put them in ESL. Okay, thank you. But just to mention, Joe, the, the course that's not quote unquote ESL is, is an, an ESL course in that the, the, the support course because it is an IELCE course, which yes. is ESL. Yes. It's designated as an ESL course, yes. it's not the so general the, ESL mm -hmm. course. Yes, so Chafee College is English for business. So the rigor is required for that English. So they learn how to do correspondence, everything that's required from business technology because it's information technology. So, um, but the, they're still receiving because of that co-op, they're still doing career view. They're still doing that support in ESL. It's just not general ESL like our other classes. Great, any other questions? Thank you, Barbara. Any other questions for Nora? Nora, you've been fantastic. And I so appreciate you sharing with us today. Um, and again, this we'll, we'll post this, we'll send out the uh, slides. And um, uh, it's just so important for people to see how uh, successful agencies do it so that they can model their programs after it. And we so thank you for sharing with us today.